Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. I hope everyone is doing well. We're done. Jordan, there's some tragic news mm. that I have to update you on. No. Lisa Wilkinson has left the project, citing media toxicity as the biggest Finally. reason for her calling it quits. I knew that would be the case. And do you know what this toxicity <laughs> is that she is referring to? Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the time when she won the Logies and she went up there and mentioned about a certain case that was really prejudiced at the time? <laughs> <laughs> and so people went really hard on her? Yeah. Yeah, that was toxic. Wait, I don't remember. That. I actually don't even remember that. <laughs> um, and on, on wait, top of that, wait, because she jeopardized the course of justice. It's everyone else's fault. What, 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 yeah. was, it, what was it about? I don't even know. I honestly, it was the Brittany that. Higgins case, and I can't oh. remember exactly what she said, but she said something that just caused the entire trial to be thrown out. Well, but she just what? went on and she said she implied that the accused was guilty. Before right. the trial had concluded. Really? Which, and because she's such a big media personality, that could have an impression on the jury. The jury ended up, like, the, ca the case got, uh, well, it was a mistrial anyways, which was not related to Lisa Wilkinson, but it just never started off on the right step. And uh, not only that, she was upset about the fact that when she had to leave Channel, uh, Channel 9, because she wasn't paying, getting paid as much as Carl, yeah, right, right, right. she's still bitter about that, and that's the project's fault? That's not the project's fault. So she is saying that she it's not that she's leaving Channel 10. She might consider doing something with them, but the toxicity has gone to a point where she needs hey, a break. Just quickly, is she married to the uh, red, Pirate. red bandana guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to hear some funny uh, trivia, Ali? Yes, go on. Uh, Lisa Wil Wilkinson is my dad's neighbour. Now? Yep. Dude, how does your dad... Yes, but by neighbour, your dad lives in pretty much that little house that they have in tennis courts. <laughs> it's an apartment. My dad lives and in an apartment. Yeah, Lisa yeah, Wilkinson but owns a tennis court. She yeah, does. yeah, yeah. So it's just at the very end Dude, of that. I'm, I'm not, I'm, no, 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 I'm not joking. My dad's apartment, uh, it's his... It's not even his, it's his partner's apartment, but he lives there and like... The, very wealthy. And uh, the, uh, the view from dad's... Uh, like balcony is Lisa Wilkins's house. I like we eat lunch. <laughs> just we, crying. We, oh my we, God. we eat lunch and watch. <laughs> I was getting paid two million less. Yeah, we we eat lunch and watch the bandana guy play. Like hit forehands and shit. How is he? Yeah, not bad, not bad for an old fella. <laughs> you would think he'd be okay if he owns a tennis court. Mm. I'm not liking that a guy whose job it was to just pick up the tennis balls that other people were, not even famous people, just some people doing it. Yeah. That guy's kind of just like, you can go to work in your back end, Mr. Yeah. Fitzsimmons. Anyway, just a bit of trivia, but. Uh, <clears throat> That's interesting trivia. You know what's funny? Miss Love once took me to a house that was neighbors with Kate Blanchett. Do you remember that? No. With your connections. What? Let's just say. <gasps> It was in Woolwich. Remember oh, when that's when we did a pod from there. We did a pod from there, and our neighbor was Kate Blanchett. Remember we were house sit I was house-sitting a mansion in Hunter's Hill for Christmas? Yeah. It was a Christmas edition pod. Where? Take, oh. Oh, yeah. Take that, Kate. That was ages ago. Yeah, in Hunter's Hill. Damn, that was a fancy house. It was. No. Anyways, coming back to Lisa Wilkinson, <laughs> do you think on a net it was good because she's now gone, or... Is there some credibility to the fact that the media gets scrutinized a bit too much now? Well, I think we all know what my opinion is going to be. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But also, don't you think this is, is, speaking of my lawyer, he had the best shorthand for separating the nuts from someone who might actually have something. Don't you think anyone that ever says, uh, I live in a toxic workplace... Every time, bam, you're the toxic one <laughs> without a fail. And this is what I hear from anybody that ever talks about working with Lisa Wilkinson. Everybody that works with her is just like, she's a psycho. And of course, that's the person that says like, I have to leave because of toxicity. And what toxicity? Is she just talking about mean internet comments? Because I don't know if you know this, but not many people like the project. Mm, that's... Uh yeah. Well, I don't know how much of it is toxicity because Carrie Bickmore just left project too so i think there's a bit of reshuffling going on anyway rove's coming uh back. 
Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Actually, they're Imagine. saying that Lisa might be replaced <sighs> by... Hanging for that what the segment. <laughs> what the... There's rumors that Lisa oh. might be re- replaced by Man, one of the, the Bachelor contestants. Oh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. It better not be Abby. Is it Abby? No, I don't think it's Abby, but... Oh, she on the Bachelor. Do you think she? Abby would get it? Get the project? Yeah. She's definitely intelligent enough for such a high caliber show. <laughs> I mean, look, the, the other day, remember that chick that used to be Dave Hughes' radio partner? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. she from home What away? was her name, Lisa? Wilkinson. Was she from no, home no, no, no. No, uh, Kate. Oh, Kate. yeah. Kate yeah, yeah, something. Kate, I swear she was yeah. from co- home and away, though, yeah. No, but that's a woman that looks exactly uh, the same as her and also has a radio right, job okay. with another famous comedian. I can't keep up. But, yeah, that woman avidly, proudly talks about how she has no idea about politics whatsoever. And yet she is a regular on the project, duking it out with the finest that Channel 10 has to offer, which is uh, Waleed Ali and, of course, the Forrest Gump of journalism, Mr. Yeah. What's his name again? Uh, McDonald. Yeah, McDonald. Yeah, that dude. So yeah. if okay. that's well, the bar, yeah, I think that if you hosted The Masked Singer, you're, 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 you're there. <laughs> I, was reading, I was reading Rupert Murdoch's Wikipedia page today for some reason. Good on you, Ali. And one of the Keeping things tabs. that apparently he pioneered was the idea that newscasters don't need to be intelligent and don't really need to care about the news. Mm. They need to care about the gossip session and the trending, st- which was weird. This He did this in the 60s. This is what but every news it. organization is doing now. He's really headed the curve. So my point is, if Project gets someone that's not an intellectual heavyweight, isn't that probably a better thing for their ratings? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it is. I think, honestly, if you got rid of Lisa Wilkinson and Waleed Ali, the show would be so much better. Now that I think about it, you're right. Just the idea of anyone discussing politics in mainstream media is so abhorrent and offensive to the average Australian that it would just be so much better if it was just endlessly, what did Kyle Sandlings yeah. do that week? I, I'd do it. Yeah. Every time I missed out on the program, I'd just, yeah, I'd, I'd, it'd just be a catch-up. It'd be like yeah. Sports Tonight, except for female edition. Mm. This is true. Mm. Well, At least it's honest. So do you think there would be... S- what kind of viewership did she bring to that show? None. Absolutely none. Are you... Yes, I am. This. They thought that she was going to bring all of this audience from the Today Show, but what they forgot to factor in was the Today Show airs at 6 a.m. in the morning, and this is a program that airs <laughs> at 6 p.m. Well, so what, people cool. are just hankering around for 12 hours being like, when do I get my hit of Lisa? Yeah. And then, on top of that, they didn't even factor this in. The reason that Lisa Wilkinson was getting paid a million dollars less than Carl Sefidovic is because no one cares about her. They, they are tuning in for Carl, not her. They should have just offered Carl even more money. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they would have gotten an audience. I'm sure she had some fans, but I don't think that... I don't think she did. Really? I think she had literally know. zero because I remember the ratings when it came out and they're all expecting this massive bump and the ratings went down. Really? That is... Yeah. That's sad, right? Yeah, yeah that's sad. That Even sad. I don't feel sorry for Lisa Wilkinson, but those faceless, soulless suits, those <laughs> poor Channel 10 execs, hey, could you imagine the justifications them. they would have had to go with their heads to be like, yeah, yeah, that was worth $2 million. Apparently Carrie Bickmore, she moved to London a few years ago or something. Did right? she? Yeah, she kind of just lives there. Uh, and... Wow, how does she do a radio show? They haven't... Yeah, she does a radio show from there. Right. God, mainstream media in Australia is so lazy. (laughs) It's the same thing that Kate Chick. She just went to Italy and was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it from here from now on. Also, I'm not getting paid as much as Dave Hughes. Yeah, because I can't remember your name. That's why I'm not getting paid as much. And then halfway through a contract when she was in Italy, she was like, I don't know, the afternoons are just so breezy here. I don't want to do it anymore. And then just left. She just left like halfway through her contract what while she was in this extended vacation anyway. It was too much pressure living on the Amalfi Coast. That's what Carrie right. Bickmore also did, but there are rumours She went are, to London. Well, at least she's getting punished in some way. She's, uh, <laughs> she's probably going to do some, uh, some TV or radio show there. They've taken, they've taken her from us. 
<laughs> wow, that's uh, yeah, you know, they think they're so much better than us, don't they? Mm-hmm. With their top tier content of the woman that I think is probably more famous for just being the voiceover for Coles for many years. <laughs> Fucking hate those ads. But don't you think that that's all I... When you look at... See, I forget her name again. Like, Carrie. When you look at Carrie Bickmore, uh, d- does anything about her immediately shriek, yes, now there's someone that deserves to be paid millions of dollars a year for their winning personality? I'm going to defend her. Wasn't she the original cast of Project? Yeah. So the fact that they made that show and it's been going on for, what, like a decade now, I think she deserves some credit. She definitely wasn't as but bad like, at the beginning. I'd give her that too. I think it was... She's never that bad yeah. ever. She's just nothing. I think That's what I'm saying. And then maybe they're like, she's just so approachable and relatable. It's like, dude, go to Adelaide supermarket and just pick up the first <laughs> mum that's looking at the Cole special going, wow, two for one. That's a pretty good deal. She'll be more relatable. I feel that way about a lot of Aussies. Like everyday, you know, day-to-day Aussies, like people that you just, whatever, like meet, like Joe Blow, like... Stick them in front of a, a camera. They're going to be like the best the country has to offer. I feel like there's not enough of that, mm. you know. Mm. But yeah. then again, when they did do that with Marty Sheargold, Marty Sheargold, oh, yeah, how he describes him, and it's a very good oh, description, yeah. is a shit version of my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. But that's what I'm saying, right? Like, at least he's a shit version of my dad. Yeah. He is someone that's approachable and very mm. Australian. Mm. 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 But then it's and like. Really, even though he's just been on air continuously for the last 30 years, he still has this feeling of, uh, can I go now? Seem to have trapped me in here. Just yeah, yeah. Far out. Where's that emergency services to get me the jaws of life so I can get out of here? Yeah. It's got that feeling. Duct tape. Well, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doesn't know that there's a microphone in front of him. A mislove character. <laughs> uh, just an that. accidental radio star. <laughs> mislove doesn't like him. So maybe there is some merit to having these The audience kind of is demanding, yeah. the ones that are watching us live, they're demanding that to bring back Rove Live instead of the project. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Rove Live, for all its cringiness and not aging well, was mad. You yeah. Know? It was mad. They had good what bands on. What happened to Rove? You want to know the inside gossip? His wife died. That was a thing. What yeah, but then he got another one. And Did so he? So oh. had a happy ending. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 and I think on top of that, like it's just, <laughs> I don't know, it's just like I've got two, a brutal story that I'm going to keep for the Uplate podcast. Okay. But if you want to hear something really harsh, the slackest thing that anyone has ever said to anyone, someone I know said something to Rove, which was beyond brutal. So make sure that you sign up for that. Oh, uh, the second oh, thing yeah. being, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I think I remember that. But yeah, Uplate sure. Rove. The reason that he stopped that is because the American entertainment industry wanted to build him up as the next Jimmy Fallon, James Corden type, yeah? Mm. So they put him over in America. They gave him a couple of late-night spots and then they realised, like most Australians, that the American audience doesn't understand a word that they're saying. He might as well be you selling me that car in Urdu that you did in the pre-show, which you'll also get if you sign up. (laughs) Oh, yeah. But (laughs) that happened. He got no traction at all in the US. He thought, no, no, I can still make it work. He started something called Rove LA, which was just... (laughs) I remember that. (laughs) Do you remember that? that? I remember that. It was just this set. I think we stole (laughs) that. (laughs) And I remember thinking, I want to watch that, and then being like, but it's never been brought up to me once since learning what it is, so I will not be watching that. Mm. You know, weird time on Fox. Mm. Like there was the Super Simpsons Sunday, which was just seven episodes of the Simpsons back to back. Love that. And then there was relayed wrestling from weeks ago that would just go until, I don't know, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And then Rove LA would come on after that. Did you watch it? Yeah. One you episode. One. How was it? Who did, how was it? It was, I remember that the all-star guests that he had, because he had a Parkinson setup where you just get a celebrity oh. and then another celebrity and they'll all just sit on a couch. Oh, I don't like that. 
I don't like that. The Graham well. Norton. Yeah. The Graham Norton I just experience. I fucking hate that. But anyway, go on. Yeah, I don't like it either. So and especially, it's kind of weird how they kind of... It's it's like starting this and being like, yeah, we've got Miss Love. You just sit there for 10 minutes. And Ali, just stand in the corner there. Don't be near yeah. the mic. And <laughs> then you come on. Yeah, you come on now. But it's even weirder than that. It's more like you got me and then you've got like Ali's uncle. I'm like, hey... uh, Hope you're good. I don't know anything about you. Yes. <laughs> we have nothing in common, you know. That was a really weird thing as well because on Graham Norton, there's always some huge, massive star like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm. And then like someone from Geordie Shaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's the no way he knows who that is. Huh? Yeah, we're like one of the housewives of LA. It's like just one of them. It's like... Well, you shouldn't be on the here. same league. Yeah, yeah, get off. But anyway, that was that, except for there was no Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was the, I remember the cast so much it was Phoebe from Friends and this was years after that ended and from Entourage which was a cult favourite they got not E not drama not the main character Turtle <laughs> Turtle next to uh, Phoebe uh, and no. it was dated enough that there was a Friends legend in inverted commas there the fact like it was so old when turtle was on that like entourage was old Mm. that was his well that's not his fault he's a newbie so he's not gonna get fucking leo and johnny depp on the same couch but he used to when he was in australia yeah but it wasn't Mm. leo it was lisa wilkins (laughs) (laughs) yeah he didn't get that many no hey hillary duff yeah. Oh, well, that's that's. I don't know. Impressive. It was probably middle tier celebrities, but he had fucking good bands. It was like, all right, here we have like one of the you know like Queens of the Stone Age, The Strokes, just like big awesome bands, and then he's just like, shout out to your mum for me, and it's like, what the fuck? I mean, glad you've got these. That wouldn't happen now on TV. That's you know? what I did like about his show. Australia does lay claim to I think two of the best talk shows ever made in world history. Hey, hey, it's Saturday was incredible. Yes. And the frequent blackface only made it better. Oh, God. And then there was just kidding. <laughs> it's a comedy <laughs> podcast. Just joking. <laughs> and then and then Rove Live came on, and then it was pretty much that, except for they got rid of the little Dickie. gollywog head that came up and the uh, voiceover, puppet. huh? Yeah, Dicky knee puppet. Yeah, but it still had this strange eclecticism of, I suppose, all of these shows that should have ex- separately existed in America and they would have done it just because they had so much time to pad out there. But in Australia, because we produce nothing, it was just all of that dumped in this one gumbo of a show. And so it was really engaging to watch because it would just be like, two minutes of this extremely famous celebrity. Now we've got this extremely funny comedian and now we've just got somebody that knows how to spin plates on their heads and yeah. that all the time. It was truly a variety show. And it was like the biggest show. You wouldn't know this, Ali, but it was like, mm. growing up, it was like the biggest show on TV. Like I still have a really specific memory. It's not like a good story, but we were in a holiday house and I was like probably like 12 or something. And... The whole, it was like us, our family, and like, I think another family. And we would all like gather around to watch Hey, Hey, It's Saturday. And I specifically remember the power went out in the, in the holiday house. It was like, and Hey, Hey, It's Saturday went down. And it was like, very bad. We were just like, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> very bad. Fuck, this is fucked. We're not going to And I remember being like, Not all the food going off. No, no, no. <laughs> that was fine. But I was distressed. I was just like. You're fucking missing it. Oh. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, you know, it was it was, it was big. <laughs> um, that is such a '90s memory because mm. there was just frequent blackouts for some reason. It was just Pakistan. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> just really, in the '90s? Yeah, I don't know. I just remember just having to tolerate it every now and then, and then it'd be like World blackouts. War Two, and I'd be like, "All right, children, get out your candles." And that, that happened a lot. That happened a lot. I remember heaps of those memories. Yeah, and now that's just Adelaide, where it deserves. Yeah. It deserves to be back <laughs> out there all the time. In between me coming back from, you like this a lot, coming back from the water and us catching fish that were definitely babies that would keep in little plastic bags and go, yay, my fish, until we figured out that they need oxygen to live and died. And then we're like, well, it was fun when they were alive. <laughs> right, I do hate that. Boy, should we do this? <laughs> I am Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Like, I am... Very empathetic to fish. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, 
I'm gonna get fired now. I'm done. I'm done. Just just because because I did that when I was 13. I'm over. Well, should we do the second segment? Memes mm-hmm. from across the pond. Please. I'm excited about this, Ali. Miss, you take these headphones. George God, I'm Wales. excited when any of us put any effort into this podcast <laughs> at all. It's rare, and despite but it's that, I still refuse to put in any effort. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 more it's it's more special that way because it's random. It's it's rare. That's what you want. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Ali, first off, can I just say, despite saying that to anybody that's newly tuned in, yes, this is our new set, and it was completely designed by Ali. And who'd have guessed there might be better sets than an extremely overpriced, cheap, and rotting poker table? Soiled poker table. Soiled, so soiled. So many fingernails. All right, let's, I don't even I don't remember know, cutting that much. I don't know what order these are in, but we'll just start from the top. What does it say? I can't see. Ali, you're gonna have to read it out. The, the, most, the most petty encounter I have ever seen. Oh, what a boss! <laughs> okay, he handled it well. Now I know how you're supposed to interact with Indian servos, and I'll never make that mistake that again that now I'm not welcome at the shell near my house anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it's done. That, that was actually really boss. That yeah, was, that was a- not... I, I mean, it's petty, but it's petty to an extreme, like, alpha <laughs> level. Yeah, that's, that's, that was, I don't think I'd think of that. And also, why. can we just all give credit to him? That was a pygmy, right? <laughs> that was a tiny man. He made it all the way over <laughs> from wherever they live. <laughs> he, I can't believe he did. Small like, in height. Truly but small man syndrome. High in confidence. Yeah, high in confidence. All right, next one. Okay. I am a transistor. <laughs> was that like was that like your Mr. Bean or something? Yeah, I don't I don't <laughs> know what that country that's, that's from. awesome. It's gotta be called like these are stuck from- in the middle or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> these aren't from Pakistan, they're oh, from okay. all over. One of oh, them. What do we what do we forget about this? It's called Rotty Please. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> Alright, next one. Yeah. You are the oh, this is uh, wait, wait, what does it say? Hey, shut your mouth. Wait, let's take a look. Let's take a look. I'll give you some context. Oh, I know this about this. This guy is the ex-finance minister of Pakistan. Yeah. And uh, he's Imran Khan is constantly saying that he is corrupt and he needs to be thrown out. Actually, he's the current finance minister of Pakistan now as well. He's, yeah. he's again. So anyway. God, so he, what a revolving door system. Yeah, so he's gone to the U.S. It yes. says, welcome oh, to sorry. USA when your uncle steals your property back home and sells it and moves to the U.S. Shit. You are the job! Hey, shut your mouth! <laughs> don't shout! I fuck you right here, motherfucker! You don't know me! Don't motherfucker try to be smart ass! I fuck you right here! Motherfucker! How much you pay? Fifty dollars? You motherfucker! You are! You are! Snap your shit! Holy shit! I wish I saw the guy. I want to that see wasn't that. funny. I, that to me was funny, but I suppose if for the, uh, the Res- how, how, audience. No, it is funny. It's just I just noticed for the first time. Do you think that that's like a language barrier, or do Pakistani people just argue in a different way? I think it's a language. They argue in a different way when it's in English. Yeah. It, the translation is respect yourself. Yeah, respect like, yourself. It's yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. cool, whatever that means, I, I guess. It means, like, you should have self-respect. Yeah, Stop yeah, screaming yeah. abuses at the airport. Right. Yeah. And That's they also just have say. a real... When Pakistani people are pissed, there's a face that they pull that just... I've, I don't see... Just then again, I've never seen an Australian pissed off, so. <laughs> 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 well, what about when they drop their beat? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> 
All right, well, next one. I'm the fastest reader in the world. I read a 1,679 pages book within <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> yes. Go on. Go on. But I can't explain what is it? It, it was happened? fast, so you didn't know. What, I do, what just happened? <laughs> what, what, what did you learn from the book that you just read? Spider. <laughs> you said what? In the first one is pretty real. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will chew your meat. Are you crazy? Think I have to talk with you. Oh, I, I just read. I can read fast. <laughs> Anybody can do what you do. <laughs> what, what kind of talent is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he just attacked him at the end. <laughs> Dude, they should replace the, the hosts of Australian Idol with those guys. Yeah, yeah, there's another video good. of that same talent that show. Awesome. Up. Fucking. <sighs> Imagine them on a panel. Oh, it's the same one. Yeah, My mother died before oh. I was born. Oh. Oh. Sorry yeah. about that. Thanks. Wait, your mother died before you were born? Yes. Did you say before you were born? Yeah, like she, my, my father married my mother shortly before I was born. She died. Then, right from then, I started singing even before I was born. Oh. Oh, I um, I don't understand. There, but there's a song my mother used to teach me when I was three. I want to sing it today. Hey, but you said she died. Ah, I don't understand. Okay, <laughs> no, okay. no, for real, you. she's even here. She can say hi to people. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is going on on that show, <laughs> dude? Do these translate? Dude, do people in third world countries just lie? Like to a <laughs> level that is just like no, more completely cr- unacceptable here. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know, know anyone. <laughs> no, no one here would pull that, right? I just lost it when the mom was like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She is here. <laughs> His reaction is what? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Ready for the next? Yeah, okay. Suck it to me. Oh, yes. The pizza man. Dominari garage. Tal, tal, tal. Mia, mia, mia. Okay. Oh! Oh! Man, that one. man did not need any more misfortune that's in his life. <laughs> well, he had a Lamborghini. Dude, that is... Oh, that's the best one so far. Good. <laughs> so good. Just like, ah, fuck. Why did Midget scream in a different way? <laughs> High pitch, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Take it from the musician. It's all about tone. All right. This is the, one, the last <laughs> one. Is. This might require some context as to what's happening, but watch it first, okay? happening and why did he get his ass whooped because that guy it was his stage he <laughs> infiltrated the stage that's what a westerner would say <laughs> so basically the reason why he got his ass <laughs> you, know, you know like you know how uh <laughs> <laughs> So there was clearly some kind of a school talent show thing going on, right? And this kid's talent was that he was dancing to fucking Bollywood numbers. But <laughs> <laughs> first of all, dancing like that in Pakistan or India, wherever it is, is like um, it's already kind of shameful unless you're doing it. But the idea of you throwing money at someone makes it really seedy and stripper. Oh. So the kid was probably <laughs> sitting there watching the talent show and was like, Boys, I've got a, I've got oh. a good idea. <laughs> he went up there and he started throwing money. And the <laughs> teachers got really upset and started hitting him. I love that the reason. teacher just started smacking the shit out of him. Like, it, like the idea of that is just like, <laughs> holy shit, that you can smack the shit out of someone. Like, oh, that's like, that's old school. I got to pee. Hang that on, was, yeah. It was, 
is it still legal to hit kids? Or they just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this was India or Pakistan, but I'll share a fun fact with you. It is now illegal, corporal punishment, and it was made <laughs> illegal in the year 2021. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and, the only reason, and the only reason why it's illegal <laughs> in 2021 <laughs> is because a really famous singer <laughs> was like on about it. And he was like, this is r- ridiculous. The kids are losing their eyes at school. <laughs> and everyone was like, what? And then he went to the prime minister and he was like, come on. Do something about it. It's like, yeah, I like your songs. All right, done. <laughs> and, and they changed the law. Now it's illegal to hit kids, but they're still getting their ass whooped on a regular basis. Oh, so it's like that African country where, like, yeah, slavery's illegal, but no, everyone has a slave. It's the yeah. same thing. You still could beat him. Nothing will yeah. happen. Yeah. So if you just go to the cops. Nothing. They'd, nothing. <laughs> they'd be like, we're glad you were probably up to no good. This is, this is. This you know is, what else as well? The cops are probably right. I told you. I, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but this is a, a Russell Peters joke, an actual anecdote of one of my dad's friends. They moved to Canada and they had a kid over there. The kid was like just. He he wasn't a good kid. He was a <laughs> bad kid. He was doing all the bad shit. And one time the dad whooped his kid's ass, and the kid like reported it to the police. The police came and the dad didn't go to jail because, but like they had, if you ever do this again, you're definitely going to jail. So the dad, like, slowly in a few months, uh, I think it took like a year or something, convinced the kid to come to Pakistan or like we'll go for a holiday. And as soon as they get out, literally on at the airport on tarmac he takes out his shoe and starts beating the shit out of his kid <laughs> mercilessly everyone's walking by <laughs> the kids like screaming the customs officials come they're like what's going on and uh, and the dad's like that's my kid he's up to no good and the customer's like all right we'll just this is a domestic matter we'll just walk away and he continues to hit his kid with the shoe <laughs> jesus <laughs> he's uh Standing by his convictions. <laughs> you know what I really want to know? Other than that, did he say it was a good holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. They're saying that none of us could see the memes because they were like too small on the screen. Oh, but well, well, well. I will just tune into the YouTube page and um, yeah, yeah, up our views. And, yeah, and zoom, to that, you fuckers. Zoom in. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I enjoyed it a lot. Seems like our audience didn't at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> they get, they were, like, rest assured, they were very good. They were good. Wait for it to come out on YouTube, zoom in, and then watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Jordan, this is a really risky <sighs> segment that I... I think I'm, I'm like the only... I think I'm... I just, I'm okay, that's a bad omen, isn't it? We were just laughing at kids getting beaten for... <laughs> Ten minutes. When Ali says this is risky, I get worried. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I don't the, know. The, 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 because the as talisman. you can see, as, as he just showed us, that is the world that he is from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. if that man is saying, it's guys, risky. I don't know about this one. This yeah. is a bit sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I'm in the best position to even <laughs> comment on it because I feel like if you guys comment on it, you might get cancelled a lot quicker than I would. Fuck Indians. No, not that. No. <laughs> Actually, a little bit, but in a different way. In, oh a, God. in, a, in a different way. So <laughs> this comes from, so I have a friend who's um, who works as a, he's an IT, he's a software dude, he works in one of the Australian companies, and he's applied for, he's Paki, and he's applied for his um, permanent residency, which is still in the process. It's been about two years or something. Anyway, so he was telling me, that you know how there's a skill shortage in Australia, right? Mm, well, I've heard. Yeah, so there, there's a skill shortage in Australia. So the Australian guess government to me. and the New South Wales <laughs> government in particular have created this quota of people that they want to get migrants that they want to get from Dude, overseas. Dude, we're here. What are the skills they need? But listen to me, miss. <laughs> you might support me on this, but I actually j- kind of feel strongly about this. All so right. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty set on the fact that we can cover all of it. <laughs> that's, that's kind of my... You're looking at a future budding nuclear physicist right here. Any, all right, just give him time. Yeah. Smash Give him atoms. a few Joe Rogan YouTube interviews. He'll, he'll do it. 
But you'd be Don't. surprised. It's not just nuclear physicists. Like the skill <laughs> shortage applies to. I was checking I it out. Even choreographers, dancers. So like if. Oh, if come on. As, I think we can do without that as a country. <laughs> I think so too. But that's not my point. My point is, so he was explaining it to me, uh, how, uh, how long the process, once you're in Australia, you go, you do your uh, uni degree here, you do a master's or bachelor's, then you spend a certain amount of time in the field, you try to get a job, and then you accrue these points, do these extensive English language testing requirements, and it might take maybe five years or something for the whole process before you're even considered, before you get an invite for permanent residency, which is fine. I mean, if it's the process, right? I'm happy with that. However, because of this skill shortage, uh, New South Wales government and even Australian government have, they're looking to expedite overseas migration really quickly. So people that are living overseas in whatever country you might be, you are being fast-tracked if you meet those skills requirements, yeah. apply for permanent residence. <coughs> well, that makes sense. It makes sense. However, <coughs> I have a little bit of an issue with this because your pri- and because the, the 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 migrants that are already in Australia are not getting prioritized because they're already because they're already in Australia, they don't form they're not fulfilling the skill shortage issue. Because they're already being counted in the labor force. Well, that makes sense because they are working, right? They are working <coughs> here, but my except your cousin. But anyway, well, no, <laughs> it's not about that. I'm just saying this was something that, like, it's what I'm saying is that the idea that people that are living overseas can get fast tracked and get permanent residency before people that have already lived here mm. have accustomed to Australian life, understand what Australia is about how people, what the culture over here is. And let's not forget, have done the grind. And paid they've worked for at it. like, they've done Uber. Costs they've done a whatever. Lot. Yeah, all of that. And then s- brought thousands of dollars into the Australian economy for these uni education. And they're not being prioritized as opposed, and people that are being prioritized are basically, they've never been to Australia, are going to come here, maybe spend like three or four months, get their pathway to permanent residency. What do you... What yeah, do you guys think? Fucked. Like, that don't you think the priority no, well, should be given to people? No, hang on. Do they that have the skills? Just because they let's here. assume both of them have the skills. Let's well, say why are we assuming okay that? Because they both do have skills. If and you yeah, have they do have skills. But as you see, Ali, as you just mentioned, we have a serious dearth of ballet choreographers. It's in this not. It, look, I'm just saying that's one of them. So, but the skill shortage applies to like accountants. Uh, actuarial. I'm sure we engineers. don't have a dearth of accountants coming out of UNSW. Physicists. But my point is, assuming, let's assume that both those parties, and it's not a national thing, like people that are here are also from those different countries. I just, I just strongly feel that if you've lived here and you've lived as a term, temporary resident, you've, let's say you've, you've probably had a, a, a really difficult time you've now actually accustomed to the Australian way of life. You've understood what the culture is. You've paid your dues. And I think there's nothing wrong with it. Like, even if you have yeah, a five-year period Ali, where you're... Most of these people work at BP, and I think Miss Love could handle that. But Jordan, they still should get... <laughs> I think they should still get priority over people that are not even living here. I don't. Now that I've, I... Originally, oh, I, I thought that they did. But now that I think about it, dude, if they need engineers... And they're not an engineer. I know this is an audio media, but I just don't know how to make it any more simple than that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that if 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 you don't meet the skills requirement, <coughs> you're not getting permanent residency either way. So, so right, 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 right. Okay, right? okay, so, okay. So that's so I'm talking about like for like. There's a there's a let's say we need physicists, right? There's a physicist in Australia, and there's a physicist in Pakistan, right? And both, let's say both of them are originally from Pakistan. One of them has studied for two years over here and is working in some gig economy, is trying to get his permanent residency, meet his a point requirement, and find his pathway to permanent residency. And then there's another Pakistani who lives in Pakistan at the moment, is also a physicist, and is currently working in some company over there. I'm with you. Who d- should get priority? The company guy. He should. Why? Nah. Because no the way. other guy's not really skilled. You're kind of saying that he's not. I'm assuming both of them are equally skilled because non-skilled people are not getting a Jordan. So assuming that both of them are equally skilled. Let's say... So it is just an absolute like for like. This guy's been working in an Australian company as a physicist and then there's a Pakistani working in a Pakistani company as a physicist. Yeah. 
that's the equal. Yeah, okay. And the reason but I why don't the think that that's guy, probably got that big of an overlap. I think it does. Like, there's basic skills requirements, and anyone that does not meet those skills requirements is not getting their pathway anyways. Mm. So both those candidates will meet the requirements that the Australian government has. I'm just of the opinion that even though there's a skill shortage and the labor force over here includes temporary residents, they should still get priority. I was reading an ABC article. It's hell for people that are already here because the system is geared for yeah. pre-pandemic yeah. when we were really choosy. And now, post-pandemic, when there's a dearth of, like, uh, there's a huge requirement for those people, the, the local process is still the same, which takes years, but the overseas process has been expedited because we are in, you know, serious times and we need urgent uh, replacement of people. I think that you're missing the caution about the fact that those people have no clue about what Australia is. And they'll, I feel like Pauline Hanson over here, but I am, I am an immigrant myself. I came in this exact manner. So I feel like, and the fact that there was about five, six years or seven years maybe when I was in Australia without a temporary residency, I did all sorts of jobs. I think in the long run that helped me. I understood what this society was. I understood how you're able to succeed in this society made friends really it's what john howard was saying like you assimilate and if in that period time period and it's not just me most people that live here after a certain point realize that this country is amazing and it's a privilege punning to be, become a citizen over it, here it's good punning yeah snacks. but ali how does this fit into your theory of a uh, big australia Look, that's a different thing. Right now, I'm not talking about the big Australia aspect. Well, that gets it. you to the big Australia quicker. Look, I've I've given up on big Australia because I've realized <laughs> most yeah. Australians are not for big Australia. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not like, gonna be like some finally. guy who's like forcing people to like I'm not Hitler, so I'm not gonna like force <laughs> people to do things that they don't want to do. But I'm just saying, like in this circumstance, this is an oversight. This is this is like this is not because the system was designed this way. It's because people are looking for the closest solution to them. But this process is not only unfair to people that are already living here for years, but it's also, I think, not that good for social cohesion in the long run. Maybe. I'd like to see how much of an overlap there is, though. I feel like the government would probably have very good statistics on this. And there's either two things at play here. It's either that or they do want the big Australia. And so they're just trying to cram as many bodies as they can on this island. Well, if, they, if that's the thing, Can't then trust why are... trust Labor's statistics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just a, stat, a statistics thing. They look at a labor shortage. They're like, how do we fill that labor shortage? And the answer doesn't lie. Make sure that you process the temporary residents that are already in this field quickly. Because that those numbers are already in there, so they're like, "Well, get people from overseas." Uh, let's just keep the it's just be a that bureau- simple. It's a bureaucratic Dude, decision. Yep, the, yep. That will have long term impacts. Yeah, maybe. Dude, keep the labor sh- Let's remain in a labor shortage. Just forget about labor shortage. Just export more minerals. Done. And the one last Damn. thing that I wanted fifties approach. The one more thing that I want to <laughs> add on this is that this, as I also feel, is a very uh, it's it's important to me that in. Im- Immigrants that we g- get from overseas that become part of our society and become Australians should come from a should come from diverse backgrounds. So, if everyone that was coming to Australia was from Pakistan, that's not a good idea. Yeah, it's you like need not to have people. Yeah, it needs to be truly multicultural. It needs to be. Jordan's gonna hate it. South Americans. It needs nah. to be uh, Asian. Can we just skip? It them? needs to be Europeans, Eastern yeah. Europeans. It needs Yay. to be a mixed batch of people. And I understand that the complications in that is is that there's a huge pool of qualified workers that live in India and China or Pakistan and Bangladesh, these big countries. And there's not that many of those skilled workers uh, maybe in Poland or maybe the ones that are in Poland don't want to necessarily migrate to Australia. But I feel like that's something that we should take into calculus either way. Don't you think that there should be a diversity of immigrants? I think that... Yeah, more... Uh, yeah, Poles. That's what I reckon. No, I'm not just Poles. But if it was just Poles, I would be saying the same thing. No, no, no. I get it. Yeah, I yeah, think but you're right. wouldn't be saying the same no, thing. No, no, no. I get what you're saying. It's like you want a mix. It's not multicultural if you have one dominant. And I'm really talking about hey, my well, own why? community why? here because most of the influx of uh, immigrants in Australia at the moment are people like me. Yeah, but, but why don't you just want them all coming from one country? 
Why because don't? Because it's not. Because then it's because that's a that's a whole different conversation that we can have on the upload. <laughs> <laughs> so really, the only reason that you don't want them coming from one culture is because of optics. No, not just optics. It's just that it's I think it's better for uh, social cohesion in our country. Why? If we were a diverse bunch of people, because you either have well, like I know quite a few conservative pundits in the U.S. that would strongly disagree. Yeah, but you either go like full on diverse or not at all. Not this. You can't just have a one primary group of people. It doesn't make sense. It's against the. You know the whole and then, principle. Do you know what like, that leads? But to? But that's what I'm saying, right? That like it seems to ghettos. just be a principle. But yeah, you, you know, in terms of like actual practical outcomes, is there any? That leads to know. ghettos. I don't know. If you get one community, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's too late for that, Arlo. Yeah, I know, well, but like not, yeah, we, get, we also have. I mean, Miss Love and I just went to a certain ghetto in Melbourne the other day, <laughs> and uh, they said to us afterwards, "Oh, like cash only." Mm. And that was the scariest trip to the bank. Shit, I've you ever you were done. gone for a while. I was just kind of didn't really think about it. I'm like, hmm, hmm. I'm just eat more sponge bread. And go, you know what I mean? Well, I'm like, glad that you had a great time. <laughs> and thank you for taking me to I that hope, ghetto. I hope <laughs> it was not was my, my decision to be there in the first place. I hope. I and then when we left. <laughs> And these two lads came up to me and were just like, hey, bro, you're the one that was making fun of Spanien, eh? And I was like, oh, boy. It's just going to get worse before it gets better. And in a way, it did get a lot worse because then they had to sit there and talk to me about, like, uh, <laughs> the show ethics lads of culture. Lads. Have you ever heard this before? The ethics of lads. Yeah. You and I take Jordan to see the world. That's what we do, mm. don't we? Miss, Jordan. give Ali a rundown of what their argument is for oh, why lads, oh, um, uh, you know, uh, uh Prop, you know, the best people in Australia. That's their I view. Mean, sweet boys, but I, their argument was uh, basically. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of lads, oh yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, bruh. They were just saying that, like, and they're not, they're not, they're not wrong, really. But they were. Uh, they're I not think wrong. they are wrong. Well, really, I think that they're overstating it. I think I th no, they're right, but like it's right in that it's sort of been like you know it's the same way of saying like you know like I don't know. Fairy bread's good. It's like yeah, I guess it's also fucked up, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's, it's kind of it's like it was kind of like it was, they were saying um, that like lad, lad culture is really a working class culture, and it came it naturally sort of apparated from from something it's a natural working class uh subculture that just kind of came out of australia and so because of that it's like kind of like a beautiful thing and anyone that pays it out is just a snob and it's like yes me to a degree but i would say there's a lot more nuance in that in that they it's spit not a lot. an original culture well there are yeah. literally lads in the uk that yeah. you stole it's it from right UK. down to the it's fashion a UK thing it's yeah. a uk so it is it, so, so I would, it's not unique yeah, but, but, at all you know, we say bra instead of fucking like chev or whatever the fuck they say they lad but you know so i agree with that what you're saying you know they were they were they were like trying to get like mount make a mountain of out of a molehill where it's just kind of like this is a big thing and it's like think that you're trying to justify the fact that you're <laughs> a little bit and you know good on you but you know it's like i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna like you know it's like like, like culture is like what like yes yeah, spitting that's charming isn't it like yeah 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 I yeah know. i mean I you don't really made should, the streets better it shouldn't you be working shunned. around banks like the same thing with <laughs> spaniard it shouldn't be shunned outright out of a snobby perspective of like it's just they're just criminals but and there's something to be said from that, you know. Having Cursor. said that, he did write a book about why he's a criminal. But you know, you love Cursor too. Like, there's something in that. Oh, I like them. I think yeah. they're funny. Yeah, I think that. There's, I yeah. I don't know. They they kind of were making the assumption there that it's like it's the same thing that every time it's just like weed heads, gamers. Anytime you ever make Any fun of that there. subculture, yeah, all of a sudden you've taken it way too far. Yeah, like I can I can objectively look at musician culture and laugh at how ridiculous many elements of it are even though I except the vines except the vines obviously but like that i you know i think it's great but like you have to be uh, you have to be self-aware and i think they just weren't super self-aware about it and then i think i got in trouble when they were sort of going at jordan and i was just like he was like well, what about it and i was like yeah you know i just think it, it is funny though and he was just like well what do you mean i'm like 
you got eyes and ears, <laughs> you know, it's funny. Sorry. Like, and I'm also not- this, this is kind of, you know, the whole thing of uh, hipsters not being able to recognise that they're hipsters. Yeah, The fact yeah. that they said to us, lads don't exist in Melbourne, it's a Sydney thing. And both Miss Love and I are staring flabbergasted, <laughs> being like, Look at- then are you guys the last Tasmanian Tigers? <laughs> is... <laughs> Are you not lads? Yeah, yeah, that's just not. You do say bra as a full stop. Yeah. Uh, you're s- defending Spanian uh, <laughs> as a cultural icon yeah. of Australia and saying that he is the only man of any significance to Australia's culture that has existed yeah. since Chopper, which sounds like a pretty lad point to me. Yeah. Like, I, if Melbourne is like... 50% lads, I reckon. <laughs> you walk around and you see so many of those sketchy shoes that were like, that were cool in the 90s and then a joke for 20 years and now cool again. You see a lot of those and yep. it's like, yeah, uh, this is... Only in some of them can be ironic. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we're in London right now. Like, don't, let's not, that's, that's not, that's just bullshit, you know, like... So, oh, man, there were so many things that I took issue with that conversation, <laughs> but at the same time... I also it. had to give them that same point that I give Spanion and Cursor, which is that I think the whole time you're looking at them and thinking, if we were 15, you would mug me oh, right now. Yeah. But now for some reason, you've got this weird wisdom of the street that you're imparting uh, in this very relaxed way that is extremely peaceful. But there's also this kind of feeling whenever you're talking to lads that are older that's sort of like when you're talking to a black belt in karate. It's like, you know they could kill you. Yeah, yeah. And they know it too. And then as a result of that, they go out of their way to be extremely non-confrontational at the same time. Yeah, it was a bit of that. Have you ever been in that situation, Ali? No, yeah. just everyone in Pakistan is just like, yeah, I've got a gun, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad they're non-confrontational because otherwise it's scary. No, th- yeah, it's yeah. weird. I don't know, what is that? Someone has to tell me about that. Why is it that as soon as a lad hits 28, all of a sudden they're like more peaceful than monks? Well, because, you know, you can't be 28 rolling around, rolling people. It's not a... Uh, even even lads got to settle down, you know. They're going to be... Uh, <laughs> just punch some darts on the, on, the, on the low and just, you know, if shit kicks on, you know, just chuck it. Kick Maybe in, it's just once that on they start in. integrating into the economy, like Ali is saying, that we should be accepting all of the uh, quote-unquote skills that we have here. As soon as lads realise that they can be brickies and then they will have a continual stream of income to buy those darts, mm. then all of a sudden they're not violent. Maybe. I don't think it's bricky. I don't think that. I don't think they become tradies. I think it's just... It's, a, it's like everything. Every Everyone mellows out to a point, you know? But, you know, if you had said like, no, nah, they're they're fucking they're a joke and just laughed a bit. Then like they, they would have kicked on. <laughs> you know, it's always there. <laughs> I'm sure they would have been happy to say I punched Jordan Shanks in the head. And I would have been happy for them to have that story too. Good content. But I honestly think that they they actually were really good no, guys. They're it's legends. Just, they're I, legends it, it's, sure. it's more just Heaps my issue nice. with that. It's just yeah, any subculture is a subculture for a reason. They can't look outside of it. Probably, and and I think that you know every every subcul everyone in a subculture grows and they they eventually become less. Uh, what do you call it? Like, like I don't know what the word is, but like, uh, you know, obsessed and and I forget the word, but just 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 stuck in that uh, like dogmatic of I guess of that culture, and then you know someone starts to be like, hey, you should like, you should uh, listen to you know Metallica, and then they start to be like. Yeah, this isn't too bad. And then it's like, hey, you should try to do this. And like, maybe try to like eat something like sashimi. Like, tastes pretty good. And then they mellow out. Of it. They mellow out as you get older, you know? That's what happens. That's why you don't really see any 90 year old punks, you know? <laughs> They've grown out of it. A bit. Uh, hey, come on. I've seen Johnny Rotten. Yeah, he's Johnny not 90. Knox. He's not 90, though. Johnny Knoxville, too. Yeah, they're not 90. Yeah, he's yet. still rocking on. Yeah, he's close to that. Hey, Miss, have you been following. Um, the FIFA World Cup, which is happening in Qatar. I know it's happening there. I, hey, I learned that from listening to AM radio with Jordan in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. And then I just realized after listening to AM radio in Melbourne, I was like, 
Fuck, this is just the Friendly Geordies podcast. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this it was great. We didn't they turn they it just off. talk about neighbours a little bit more than we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's that was so fucking good. The FIFA World Cup is riddled with controversy. It yeah. started well, it's in off. Qatar, so. Well, that's the which I honestly think is a bit of a stretch by Western media. Like, come on. Yeah, it is a bit of a stretch. Like, what, like, what are we trying all, to do here? They're happy, they're happy, people like, are happy to stop off in Qatar to fly to Europe, but they're yeah. not happy to have the World Cup there. It's like, well, you can't stop off there. Which one is it? You gotta choose one. Yeah, and also right? I think that we're all missing something here, which is that they do export something that we really, really Oil? need. Yeah. No, secondhand but furniture. We, we don't. <laughs> we don't. But it's like it's something like it, it's kind of annoying seeing CNN journalists say that that country was built on the backs of slaves. Is that what they say? And we're still gonna play. The right. FIFA World Cup there. That's rich. Bro, you're from the US. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so was your country. Yeah. It's like, Is that what they've been saying? Yeah. And oh, well, God. not just that. Then they were like, well, it's going to be really hot in Qatar. So they were like, all right, well, we'll just get air conditioned stadiums. Yeah. And, and what's they their did point that. just being like, I knew we should have had it in Texas. Yeah. And Probably. And, uh, <laughs> Texas. And, and they talk about the other issue is that uh, they talk about. Um, yeah, like the, the condition of the migrant workers over there, which admittedly, that's the one aspect of it which is a little credible. However, in my view, this argument they be there. is about 10 years late. Why? Qatar, Middle East, uh, like Dubai, Dubai Saudi Dubai Arabia, the all the same. They all really exploited migrant workers yeah. from the subcontinent. And it's a fact. Like, yeah. horrible conditions. You can't be a citizen. Ten people Why do they still room. go? But that's the thing. Like, that has really mellowed down now, considering that their countries are pretty much built. And eh. so, you know why we weren't talking about it then? Because at the time, these Oil. countries weren't our competitors. They were uh, second world countries that we sort of ignored, even though actual human rights atrocities were happening at the time throughout the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. We didn't care. It's the West classic. did not give a fuck. As soon as they became, they became first world and they started developing technology that was co uh, in competition to us, we're like, oh my God, have you seen how they treat yeah. their workers? All of a sudden, and like, I'm glad that you came to that point. However, you're late. And you forget that that's exactly how your country's progress too. Whether it be colonial Britain or it be the US with the slaves. Every, most countries, every empire. most countries that have become first world affluent countries, part of it is at the back of subjugated, subjugating other people. And Qatar hey, has yeah, done what, it. What's an example Qatar's, of one that didn't? And I, will, I yeah. want to say Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, they did it to an extreme level. But that, but you're uh, again. It's late now. It's you the, missed the it's ball. The, it's the Chomsky if you were saying point. this ten years it's ago. It's also the three AW point. Who's that? AM radio. Everyone that was ringing oh, up yeah. was going. Oh, you should be hypocritical. You know, like yeah, they, they were saying, saying that? exactly. They were this. saying that. Yeah. yeah, but it is the Chom Chomsky's. I, I listened to. I, what did I? I listened to that fucking like. I'm you know the the Lex Friedman kind of annoying fuck podcast, and he and he interviewed Chomsky, and um, he was saying that he was like. America had no problem with like death and dictatorships and and murder of like this 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 country, but all of a sudden they care about like that in Iraq or in. And the, they, the yeah, you know why they actually pissed off at it? I swear it's just because Qatar funds Al Jazeera exactly. and that's the competitor of CNN. That's the other point, <laughs> Jordan. Excellent point. I, it's Al Qatar. You know why specifically Qatar? Because Qatar is one of the only oil or gas like resource rich country which has an independent foreign policy from the Middle East and the US. So they support, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm in agreement with this, but they support uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. They support uh, uh, Iran in many ways. And they're also really gas rich, which makes them a really good sort of talking point for the Western media. And FIFA World Cup has just sort of, you know, it's it, all the all eyes are on that, and so everyone's really milking this. But mm -hmm. I'm not even disagreeing. Is with the how US playing in this World Cup? Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. So everyone's going to it anyway. What? So it's just CNN having a whinge. Yeah, well, not just CNN. Australia in particular is pretty salty about it being in Qatar as well. But not the AM listeners. They were just like a bit hypocritical, mate. 
Anyway, well, which is weird because they were also just well, like some of them, some of them, some. Were yeah, it was also, like, but they were also just like. But I just really age. need to make this point, right? Uh, shocker is for fags. <laughs> they really needed to point that out. <laughs> it's just like I don't know why we're, we're even live, talking about live, this on three A's. Jordan, if you say this, if you say something like that, it's again, not me that said it. They did. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the difference from our actual set? Go back to it. No, 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 look, look, go back. <laughs> we're back. Yeah, and then go back to me. Same Very thing. little different color grading. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have to wear this jacket for some contrast. I've got an excuse now. What is that fucking Of course jacket? a guy wearing a Turkmenistani sports oh. jacket is like, I've got no problem at all with Qatar yeah. hosting soccer. Exactly. <laughs> uh, is it but the Soccer an, World Cup? Yeah, it's the Soccer World Cup. The other controversy that wa- that's happened is that Iran played England, um, I think yesterday, and... The Iranian players refused to sing their national anthem in support for the protests in Iran. Why is that a controversy? The Iranian media blurred their images, did not show it on state TV. Oh, on my face, blur. Dude, Gear. Iran is... <laughs> Man, America and Iran really need to accept that they're not that different a country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do they do? They blurred like, them. Well, they just tried to show not show the fact that Iranian uh, athletes weren't singing the. Wait, National Iran anthem. is the Taliban in power there? No, no, no. Well, why place. would they blur them? What, what's what's the protest about in Iran? Because well, they're protesting remember, the government. Remember oh. Masa Amini case? This uh, woman that was killed by the moral police. You came that's to in me. Iran. Yeah, that was that's in Iran. That's what I'm saying. I thought so. That's are they actually called the moral police there? Yeah, yeah. It's the not just people police. that work at the Sydney Morning Herald. Nah, they've got like a Persian um, name for it, but it translates to moral police. Fuck, who's... Oh, okay, so the Look, government's doing... as much as you shit. don't agree with them killing innocent civilians, pretty boss that they have a moral police. Yeah, because you are the moral police of Australia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't mind. I don't mind being your, your chief you, wigum of Iran. That'd be all right. Uh, what? You'd kill him if you could. Who? Anyone. Anyone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, if I was in charge of the moral police, I'd be a lot more immoral than they are. Yeah, <laughs> Believe yeah, yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, man. Like, what, what do they do? What does the moral police... Whip what people? are they supposed to do? Well, they're supposed to make sure that none of the hinky-panky is happening on the streets of Iran, things like... Oh, so if there's, like, a public display dating, of affection, really? they just hang them and... Women, can't, women have to wear scarves and... What's There's a fashion statement over there where the uh, cool or liberal uh, Iranian women would have their scarves a little bit behind, like as in gangster half of their hi- uh, what's head. What's the showing. government of Iran though? Like, what's their deal? Are they like religious so they're a, conservative? Yeah, they're a theocracy. It's actually run by clerics. Yeah, and so it basically is what I said. Recently, mm. basically, yeah. is that? Well, I mean, that's uh, quite ignorant of Islam as a religion, but yeah, I'll stand <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 it, yeah, you will. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, but these protests that happened a few months back, Iranians, all my all my Ir- uh, Iranian Australian friends, because I don't know that many people that live there, but all of them, dude, they're so politicized at the moment. Each and every one of them, you every time you open their story, it is nothing but protest, political action. They're trying to get another every every fifty or sixty years, Iran has a revolution. Shit. Mm. That's just the way they. That's their voting. <laughs> so they do have voting, but uh, they have a revolution, and they're really trying to bring about another one. And um, are they trying to bring it about, or the U.S.? Good question. So usually, most of the times that recently the Iran has had uprisings, it's really been feminist focused. So it's about uh, moral police things like we should be able to. Uh, right. So it's definitely the CIA. That is, that's a, that, there's, a, there's a pretty big population in urban centers of Iran that st- st- feel strongly about it. This is the same country that under the monarchy had outlawed wearing scarves. So they have a very French streak amongst the urban uh, Iranians. Mm. And they have been, they're obviously very against the current theocracy because the theocracy is Islamic. But the problem is that their numbers have always been so small that any kind of action that they've brought hasn't been able to uh, shake the government. And l- let's not forget that this is a repressive theocracy where the state is being guarded by very, very powerful military forces. So bringing about a re- revolution in Iran is no easy task. What you need is a diverse uh 
uh, pressure groups coming together. So not just the feminists, because there's a certain there's a certain section in Iran that is uh, feminist that want to see changes, but then most of them don't really care about that. However, they do care about extrajudicial killings, human rights abuses. And so what's happened with these recent protests with Masamini, Masamini was, even though it was, she was uh, killed by the moral police because apparently she wasn't wearing her headscarf right. So that falls into the feminist category. But she was a Kurdish Sunni. So what's happened as a result of her death is that Sunni nationalism in Kurdish areas of Iran sprang up. And that's that's a big problem for Iran, more than the, the Tehran fasc- uh, urbanistas bringing about a revolution, because they know they can handle that. Can you tell the difference between an Iranian and a Kurdish? So... Iranians are primarily Shia. No, Muslims. I know, but like uh, physically. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to tell a difference, but they're they're different ethnic groups. They're different ethnic groups, but like yeah. I don't know, do they have like longer noses or something like that? Like, could Probably you? Could you that's a Kurd and that's an Iranian. Mm, if they told me that they were a Kurd and an Iranian, I could be like, oh yeah, I see that, but not off the bat. Right. Okay. Um, they speak. They can. They all. They speak a different language too. But it. it, it um, Kurdish people aren't the only ethnic group that live in Iran. The majority is Iran of uh, Persian speaking Shias. However, there's small pockets of different ethnic minorities. For example, there's uh, Balochi uh, populations in Iran too. And when Masa Amini was killed, not only did it bring up the feminists because it being a feminist issue, but it also started bringing in different ethnic groups within Iran that were like, that were not looking at it as or oh, this was an impediment of her freedom, but we're looking at as the state Shia government is killing our people. Yeah. So these protests, the last protests, have actually managed to bring up a a bigger umbrella of people mm. than there was before. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to lead to a revolution. However, what I'm saying is that this is definitely a more potent force and might eventually lead into a different a change of government a change of government not in the change of state structure but a change of government maybe a more liberal cleric would become the next president Uh, we don't know maybe it brings about a revolution because iran's history is riddled with revolutions of that sort we will see but this is this is a bit of an issue for them and the fifa world cup uh players refusing to sing the anthem is just one symptom of it that's a highly politicized society we don't know what the numbers are. I tried to look up um, opinion polls in Iran to see, to try to gauge what percentage of people. Because sometimes, you know, sitting in the West, we read Western media sources, we get a, the wrong impression. We think everyone in the country is trying to get rid of the regime, but it might only be a small group of people. So I tried to look at the uh, approval ratings, and it seems like not everyone in Iran, about 71% of Iranians want a nuclear deal which even though it seems this is a very specific demand what that means is that 71 percent of iranians are looking to normalize relations with the west so what i'm saying is maybe maybe usually whatever every time there was a revolution in iran everyone got together but they had their different views so when the current revolution came about in 1979 you had clerics that were against the monarchy you had communists that were against the monarchy and a whole umbrella of people that were all against the monarchy together holding hands as they were like this is what we're going to do we're once the regime fell it the the clerics took over and the communists the left just lost but right now it seems that a similar sort of coalition is building again we're different groups that are fighting for different reasons. We get exposed to only one aspect of it, which is the feminist aspect of it. But there's a whole host of different little issues that are bringing people together. Even things like the teachers went on a strike for their... Iran is going through... like The world is going through a recession and Iran is going through a triple recession because they're, um, uh, they're under these extreme sanctions. And this is really bringing about dissatisfaction amongst Iranian people, whether it be rich or poor. Now, m- s- Iranians will tell you, the ones that live in Australia, because they're usually from the urban uh, section of people that were like well off in Iran that moved after the revolution, they'll tell you that the revolution is around the corner. It's going to happen. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that this time, this is this 
will annoy the government a bit more. We'll see what happens. Recently, the um, uh, the the top cleric, Ayatollah Ayatollah Khamenei's house. <laughs> Ayatollah, <laughs> what's the Simpsons thing? It's like, oh, but you never know when this comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, I am a Ptolemy mess, but Eddie's gone. But, he, but as we speak, Ayatollah Nesbidez is consolidating his powers. This Ayatollah, <laughs> yeah. this okay, Ayatollah thinks he's consolidating his powers. This Ayatollah thinks he's better than America. Is he right? No, no. Yes. <laughs> the one guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they burned his house down. Well, they didn't burn Shit. it, but they tried to set fire to it. Just as we speak. Which Ayatollah is a pretty Ayatollah ballsy move in Iran. That will get you. So killed. the Ayatollah is the prime minister. The Ayatollah is not the prime minister. The Ayatollah is basically Spiritual the, governor, prime minister. the governor general. But with all the powers. Whoa. So the executive power lies with the president of Iran. However, the Ayatollah basically has veto powers for everything. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. So and so this guy's uh, like a pope as well, yeah? Yeah, he's, he's their pope as well <laughs> as uh, he provides. He also fulfills the governor general duties in many ways. And it's much more powerful. So the question, the true revolution isn't when the president changes. The president might change. There might be a more left-leaning president that will come in. Because in Iran, there's cl all clerics aren't the same. There's clerics that are really hardline. And then there's clerics that are really liberal. They all fall into the same category, but they have different. So the president might change. But the, the real essence is, w does the Ayatollah go? If the Ayatollah or the entire clerical structure of how the society, that's the true revolution. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen afterwards. By the way, things could get even worse. I'm not saying that this is necessarily a great thing. It, things are pretty bad right now, but when there's a vacuum, you never know what happens. Like last time, the monarchy in 79 was really bad, but what filled it was something even worse, which is the current clerical regime. So we don't what know. What happened to the monarchy? It, they moved to LA. <laughs> Hell yeah, it became the Kardashians. <laughs> became the Kardashians. Are you serious? Moved to Beverly Hills. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are you serious? What do they no, do? No, I'm serious, I'm serious. <laughs> is it the Nothing. Do they we just, know is who the they Kardashians? are? Is it the yeah, Kardashians? well, the, 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 the king was he died pretty much straight after of cancer, but his son, uh, Reza Shah Pahlavi, uh, I think he lives in Beverly Hills. And he and people in Be like Iranians that are expatriates, the ones that left after the revolution, still want that guy to be the fucking president or king of Iran, which is a joke because he's no one. Does he want to be? Yeah, I mean, well, when he's done so with his cocaine, I'm sure he wants to be. But so that's what I'm wondering. Is it better to be uh, the king of Iran or is it better to just live in Beverly Hills? Well, I they, know which one Miss Love they was had a, They had a good <laughs> revolution. Things, say, things actually... <laughs> in 1953, they had a good revolution. Then actually fell into place exactly where you want it. The monarchy was put down, and a democratic elected leader... Did they Mossadegh, kill any of them? A left-winger came into power, and he made the gravest mistake of all, which is that he was... Pissed uh, off the U.S. He pissed off the U.S. He decided that he was going to nationalize the oil. Mm. Right. And very swiftly, through a CIA coup, <laughs> he was taken down, and this guy, who later the, the Beverly Hills dude's father, was put into his place. Shit. And... Uh, didn't they end up nationalizing Iran's oil? Well, at this point, they're a rogue regime, so it doesn't even matter. No one owns, like, obviously, they, uh, the Iranian government owns the, uh, the oil fields, but that's because no one else is willing to touch it anyways. Oh, really? Yeah. So now they're, it, it's, it's an illegal regime, which means that they can't, you legally cannot buy their oil. Mm. So it's well, much who buys better. it then? People buy it, but illegally. <laughs> Well, Iran place. buys it, China buys Sorry, not Iran. Uh, India buys it, China buys it, Russia buys it. It's the same thing that's happening with Russia. You know how there's sanctions on Russian oil, but there's countries that are still buying it. Which? Again, India and China. <laughs> they seem to hell, be the common yeah. ones. Yeah. Hell. Yeah. Supply and demand. Supply and demand. So Iran oil, that's why the regime lost. Had they, if, they ha if they didn't have oil, they would have gone a long time ago. Well, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you need something to fuel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why it's e even harder to bring about a revolution. But Did so. you hear about the terrorist attack in Turkey that was done by the Kurds? PKK. 
Um, PC. I don't know, man, because I'm really pro PK Cam. I'm gonna be honest. Who is that? Is that the Kurds? <laughs> They're the Kurds. They're the no, Kurds. No, I don't, yeah, I don't like Turkey. So I don't know <laughs> who did that. <laughs> I don't know if PKK did that. No, no, they. I think like the growing Kurds up on Chomsky, it's impossible for me to hate the PKK. So the Kurds. It's really the easy Kurds? to hate Turkey. The Kurds seem like sort of some sort of like that tribe in Star Wars that like walks around the desert and like. They're just a ticking. No, that's not them. They're they're, they're Ewoks. That's what I mean. No, no, no. Those are the... uh, The I can't remember what they are, but I know what you're talking about. Those little hooded midgets. Yeah, those things. No, they're not them. Well, but they seem like they are. They don't have a. They don't have borders. They 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 the Kurds go over like five countries. This bigger, yeah, which is why block. they're a ticking time bomb for all those countries. Because if you think of it from Turkey's perspective or Iran's perspective, let's forget. Let's now you're one of them. You look at this massive population of Kurds that encircle about like you said five countries. And have always wanted to form an independent Kurdistan. Kurdistan. Why don't they get their own country, like Israel? Why don't they get get their own country? Well, yeah, that we, we don't want another Kanye dude, situation. Give, give him Jordan. Put, put him on. Put, wait, put him on. <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Black Street. Put it on. Uh, <laughs> do not say it. Okay, 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 yeah. Let's I'll not get Kanye. Oh, I'm saying that. No, I, come on. Put all the Kurds in at, on in Madagascar. Madagascar. That's New Kurdistan. Done. No, All they, right, well, they, they I want just their said own let's not make this Kanye issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they want their own country, but they want to live exactly where they're living. And the thing is, well, because... That's not going to happen. That's in, that's not they can, happen. because they li- live geographically next to each other. It just happens that that location is divided among five countries. So if they form one country, they get a little piece of all of the countries. Yeah, but that's... Keep dreaming, and Kurdy. And that's why now you know why Iran, Turkey, uh, they all hate P- uh, Kurds. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Uh, Does anyone like Kurds? I, don't, I, I like, like Kurds. Israel. I like, I like Kurds. No, I, I mean like countries. Oh. Countries. Don't know. Don't oh, know. US likes Kurds. I yeah. thought they hated Kurds. They did. But recently, after the ISIS thing, they formed a new alliance. I can't keep up with the US's foreign <laughs> policy. It's just pick a side. <laughs> it's so on. crazy. Yeah, every time. Kurds. And this was they're, they're this must have been recent. They're attractive mm-hmm. people, yeah. the Kurds. Yeah, everyone's attractive over there. Nah, not everyone. Not the Turks. Jordan, we're the almost Iranians. out of time, uh, but we're let's do one last segment, which is something that you need to comment on. The Kurds. Donald <laughs> Trump has officially announced yes. his run. Oh, What's right, gonna yeah. happen? It seems like the entire media landscape, like Murdoch, Fox News, is against him running. The Republican establishment, once again, very much like 2016, again. is saying that you are a used bullet, sir. You are not going to win us the elections, and the midterms prove it. But Donald Trump's still coming in the ring. Mm. I like your theory. It's that gonna he's doing be it glorious, too. bro. Mm. Is he going? Is it to gonna be glorious? Because this is what I'm wondering. It doesn't have that pizzazz, bro. That he used to have. Mm. We'll find out. We'll see if he does. Because this is the thing. Even if I agree that majority of people are against Trump, even if I agree that the majority of Republicans are against Trump, the party, the party people that make those counts at the conventions and decide the nomination, they like, like lost Trump. They like Trump, mm. and Trump once he once the debates Trump start, loves bro. Them. Once the debates are on. <clears throat> Well, uh, if he's in his zone, <laughs> he's gonna steamroll. He could, and and his and the MAGA people are gonna give him a lot of support. But this is the difference because in the previous debates, he could just attack everybody because he had no record. Now he does have a yeah, record. That's true. But then again, I suppose you're kind of right. It's like they're, they're not Republicans; they're Trump supporters. Yeah, they're Trump so supporters. He could still win. It's just. He needs his flavor. He, as, as you said, like he really needs to have the swagger that he had in 2016. Yeah. And he the only piece it. of evidence that I've seen that he still might have it is when they were asking him, what do you think about Elon Musk with Twitter bringing you back? And then he was saying, I like Elon. He seems like a nice guy. I met him many times. I personally thought that he was very good to me. But also I've got to say truth news truth is said whatever it's called that the one that i have i think it's much better than twitter <laughs> <laughs> it's doing very good things all the geniuses are there 
It's very oh, smart. Oh, yeah, he started his own platform. <laughs> yeah, he just used it. He just used uh, it to siphon more attention to truth. Shit. What's it called? And Elon gave him a favor, and he still couldn't yeah, not still like. Not. Oh. He had to do it, so he still has it. Huh? So he still has it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I think oh. this is all Donald right. Trump needs to do to win You've is to- not be bitter and then keep just talking about how awesome he is. Just take a page <laughs> out of every rapper that's ever lived existence. Mm. All right, Jordan, you've got three options. Tell me who's the next Republican candidate. Is it Donald Trump? Mm-hmm. Is it DeSantis? Mm-hmm. Or is it Jeb Bush. a mystery third one? Jeb. Bring back Jeb. Do you, do you think it has to be one of those two, DeSantis or Trump? No, I think that DeSantis is the one that they're all propping up. But they did that with Jeb Darling. Bush. Remember what happened with low energy Jeb Bush? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Very low energy. But this is, I was arguing about this at that very, very scary dinner that we had uh, with Miss Love. And he was saying exactly what the press is saying. And I'm trying to figure out, did the press implant that thought that DeSantis is this wonder boy that's going to take the election by storm? Or are people actually thinking that? And I think it is just the narrative of the press. They, I think so too. That's what I They've think. They've been pitching him as like Donald Trump light you can get behind him he does all the crazy shit he's for the wall he's all of that but he's also behind the scenes a rational human being that we can like you know mold mm. so just because the we'll press see. says something doesn't we'll mean see. It's not but true. it seems like both desantis and trump because there was there was i think it does though nah not always i think always no nah, i don't think so it's just because of the midterm stuff, I've been watching a lot of CNN and MSNBC and the universe that they try and get people to focus on hmm. is so obscure. Mm. It's so yeah. removed from anything that is remotely political apart from the fact that they're talking about politicians. But it's just an endless yeah, gossip DeSantis channel for 24 exist. hours a day. Hmm? DeSantis does exist. Well, this is what I'm wondering. Yeah, I've never seen him. How pop- I think he exists. Okay, have you have you seen any of his like now speeches? Now he's a conspiracy theorist. Have you seen any? You. Of- <laughs> Me? Uh, well, maybe I'm a plant. You don't know. <laughs> have, have you seen any of DeSantis' speeches? Now we're getting somewhere. Finally, DeSantis' speeches. Look, does he he's articulate. have the charisma? Yeah, he's got charisma. He's articulate, but Donald Trump is inarticulate and has way more charisma. Mm. And does, uh, could I he would- be like a Mitt Romney? It was. Uh, remember when people thought that Mitch Romney was gonna slam and dunk Obama? Nah, he was. He didn't even come close. He was just built up by the Republican machinery. Yeah, it could definitely be that. I don't think that he's actually really got a chance when it comes to Biden. I think that people actually are voting for Biden on substantive issues, and when they're all saying we don't like him, maybe. But I think that people, when they say like they disapprove of Biden, I actually think they genuinely mean they disapprove of him. They don't hate him, right? I don't think anyone viscerally hates Joe his Biden. I mean, if Fox News, yeah. His disapproval uh, rating has gone up. So? Uh, I think the majority of people disapprove of Biden now. But they always have. Sorry, there's a, a 70% of people disapprove Jesus, of Biden. Jesus, that's now. high. Well, so his approval rating but is 30%. Yep. No. I think those are the recent polls, if I'm not wrong. <sighs> Man, to quote T Pain, Shorty got low. Well that said. is not but good. It, uh, good. Uh, well, that's like these are temporary. They go up and down. Like literally a year ago, his approval rating was at sixty five percent. Yeah, but thirties. I think it's that's forty. I think it's forty percent. Well, that's okay. Yeah, you can get <laughs> back from that. I don't think you can get back from thirty. That's Gillard numbers. You think DeSantis can beat Biden though? No, I think that probably what will happen is that Donald Trump will win the primaries. But again, I think I might only just think this because the press thinks this, but. It seems likely that Donald Trump would win the primary and then it would just be a replay of exactly what happened in 2020. And it seems like he kind of does capture the Republican Party. And as I've just explained before, you should read Democracy in Chains because it really explains how the Republican Party got to that position where it has been so hollowed out and so captured by the Koch brothers that they own that as an institution as well as the courts basically at this point. But also... The fact that they own the Republican Party and it's just one guy controlling it, if somebody who's extremely charismatic as opposed to some prattling billionaire that doesn't like being in front of cameras, that guy can take all of that infrastructure and make it work for him. And they're used to just taking orders from this one top dog. The Republican Party at this point really is 
an extremely undemocratic party, the kind of like Iran or one of those third world countries needs a sort of revolutionary figure to just come in and sweep it. It's a real winner takes all party now. Mm. So they might be wanting this DeSantis figure. They're called Messiah parties. Yeah. Yeah. They look for Messiahs. Mm. Well, <coughs> that's him. You're looking at him right now. That Donald Trump guy. He's good at uh, he's good at moving a crowd. Dude, what if it's like 2016 instead of 2020? Nah, it wouldn't be. It's 2016 was barely 2016. Everybody was like, "This is an incredible upset." But then when you go back and look at it, it wasn't that much of an upset. Yeah, but mm. 2020 was also almost 2016. Hmm. 2020 was all also mm. almost 2016. Yeah, but that's the whole thing. The fact that it was almost 2016 and almost 2020 is this thing of like, it, it is a real anomaly and weird circumstance that a Republican politician becomes president. It really is at its core a very Democrat country and is only able to be in that position because of all of the extreme gerrymandering and all mm. of the judges that are able to preside over these decisions. So it does take a lot of... Very, I mean, actually, if you think about it, 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 no parties that I know of really describe what they represent better. As in like, yeah, okay, the Labor Party does represent organized labor. That's good. But the Liberal Party, I guess they say that they like freedom, doesn't really describe what the party is. But when it comes to America, Republicans and Democrats, it actually does... They do represent what they are. It's kind of just like the Democrats really do seem to be the will of the people there and the Republicans seem to be this party that exists purely because the institutions are there for them to exist. And so, of course, they would be very pro a republic. Yeah, but you're forgetting Arkansas exists. What's that got to do with anything? It means that I don't think everyone, like you said, is a Democrat. Like it's Not, not everyone's a Democrat. I don't think it's a Democratic country. I think it's pretty much split. Man, if there was forced voting in the US, the Republican Party would be the Liberal Democrats here. They would have mm. no seat. I mm. get that, but it's America. And yeah. they are much... But that's what I'm saying. If there was a democracy, if you yeah. force the democracy to actually function, there is no way that the Republicans would get anything to what they are. It is a very inflated idea that they represent half of the country. Either way, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be buying some popcorn supply for the Republican debates. I tell you that much. Me too. Are you looking forward to it that Hell much? Oh yeah. I really don't think it's gonna be as entertaining as 2016. They're always. Well, I want to see. I want to see. Like I think Trump's just way more crusty. But what about? Okay, what do we, what do you what do you think about the fact that this time he doesn't have Murdoch with him? How much is that going? He to didn't affect? have Murdoch with him last time. He only got Murdoch at the end. Actually, that's kind of that is true. But that's when Murdoch realized that... And on top of that, Trump didn't have this huge cult-like following like he did in 2016. Like in know. 2016, he was kind of formulating that. But now it's there. It's an organized movement mm. behind getting this one man into the White House any way they can. Yeah. And that's honestly why the Democrats and the Republicans hate him because he's just able to blindsight both democracy and the institutions of America and plonk himself in. Oh yeah, true, dude. But like at the at the end of the day, his competition is fucking Biden, and Biden is could can pass away any moment. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I Look think he's at a lot him. healthier than people give him credit for. I don't think he. Is. I'm not. I'm not saying he's senile. That's that's a joke that I even I make. But I'm not saying that he's pretty much up there, but he is. An old man. He's a very old man. Yeah, but have you ever actually sat down and watched a Biden speech? I have. He's still robust. He is... Let's put it this way. Ronald Reagan won a second presidency and he was in a far worse shape <laughs> than Biden was. That's crazy that he won a second one. I mean, anything could happen in two years, I guess, but I really think that it's overstated how unhealthy Joe Biden is. No, I'm not saying he's unhealthy, but, like, you know, age is still age, you know? Age is still age, but first off, I've got no issue at all with his age. No, I honestly I don't think that, that is why he is such a good president. I was telling Miss mm. about this. I think it's honestly just because he remembers how Congress functioned in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. And he was just like, I remember when the government used to build roads. Yeah. He's got perspective. Remember when we all got saltwater taffy at the end of a hearing? That's why he stayed in politics. 
<laughs> then between you and me, CNN. Hey, I just <laughs> randomly looked at the chat. Someone said, y'all are forgetting the Gen Z surge that has stopped the red wave. No, I'm not forgetting it, but I do think, and yes, it, that's definitely true. However, they still vote in far smaller numbers than the elderly and boomers. Way smaller numbers. Yes, it did. And it is the extra little pressure point that they need. And it would be an extremely formative force if it actually came out. But it, yes, it is still somewhat overstated how large it is. But it's also the fact, like, why are we so sure that all of Gen Z is pro-Democrats? Oh, because the numbers show it. It's nearly 70%. That's okay. pretty high. Huge. That's pretty high. That's pretty high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm still thinking. I honestly that. think that one of the big things that's happened is actually what Fox News is saying, which is that Democrats. This is a. It's a. It's a real Tucker Carlson point of. This is the pattern of a Democrat-run state. They screw up their state with high crime, extremely high inflation, uh, car laws that. Uh, you know, demand that you have an airbag. I thought that this was a country of freedom. Where's the lies, though? <laughs> and then after a while, they get sick of having to pay for airbags, which is all just a scam, by the way. They kill more people than they save. And then these people start moving into God's country. Your states like Arizona and Nevada, it's only one step away. There's two types of migration that Democrats have. They have Mexicans moving into California and then moving out because of all the Mexicans there and then screwing up all the red states. And I think he's actually right. And I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> but that vote is also just really elderly. I do really like how old Arizona is too. Like, think about who wins that state. Won, it's just such an old, glorious time of America. The previous <laughs> senator that everyone knows from there, obviously, is John McCain. Yeah, he still was, votes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, son. As he should. If you're allowed to vote beyond the grave anywhere, it should be Arizona. And isn't it great that to win that state, it doesn't matter what party you come from, it's how you served your country. So John McCain won because he's a war hero, and so they all loved him. And he was there, and he was also kind of like a maverick Republican that did vote against the Republicans a lot. And then now the uh, senator that won, I can't remember his name, but he is a former U.S. astronaut. <laughs> Buzz How? Aldrin. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Isn't that awesome that it's just such an old state and that's yes. their kind of memory of how yeah. senators should run? Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. exactly how it should, too. Didn't Nev Nevada, uh, the Dems won Nevada in the end, right? Yeah. That's, uh, that was close. And who won, and who, <laughs> and who won, who won, uh, who won at, at Georgia? Well, that's going to be decided Still in early December because they're having the runoffs. What is that? Or as Herschel Walker calls it, overtime. Hell yeah. <laughs> Can you explain to me why the U.S.? That's sick. Has still not managed to do what regularly developing nations like Brazil and India do, which is the machine voting system. You literally go in, you press the button we on your candidate... That. And once the voting completes, the machine tallies the entire thing. We don't, but we have 22 million people. We can mm. manage that. Mm. With 300 million people, this is happens. Well, we still don't know where George is. Like, yeah, but the, I think your term is over. <laughs> <laughs> we don't trust the machines. That's the problem. And like, no, but I think that it is what the Democrats want, which is they want mailing. They want mailing votes. They want. As many people voting as possible, because this is my whole point. The more people vote, the more likely it is that the Democrats will win. But so they want to extend the voting period out as long as they can. If the Australian government tomorrow announced that they're going to change uh, the voting system, where now you're, instead of like that fucking giant Senate leaflet that they give you, they're just it's just going to be like an ATM machine kind of thing, would you be upset? Would you, like, be scared that, oh, technology, this is going to screw here? Up? Yeah, here. Hell yeah, I'd be upset. I yeah. actually kind of would be, too. Yeah, I want pencil It's the same paper. thing as, like, I don't like these automatic doors nah. yeah, in cars. Yeah, yeah. What like happens technology. if there's a fire? We had a few, we had a few, <laughs> dude, we had a few instances in Melbourne. There was a high-tech computer stove that fucked up, and Jordan had to turn the power off and turn it back on for me to be able to make dinner. And then when we were in the fucking car with the... 
super smart new fucking whatever like fancy Lardy car. Daff car. Oh, because we had a bag in the back, they thought there was a person there or something, and it kept beeping. But that's so ridiculous. Just because computers have viruses, does that mean you're gonna stick to typewriters? Like, it kind of, yeah. I, I have my computer has a virus, and I have to wipe the whole thing now. I'd much rather a typewriter. I think I'd be way more productive with a typewriter, yes. Ali. I'm very. I'm, yeah, I'm, so, but, so you're still satisfied with the way American elections are run? Yes. yes, but again, you're asking the wrong guy. I deliberately have the dumbest phone I can buy. And if it were up to me, we would not be filming on these cameras at the moment. We'd still be using that handheld cam that your dad had and filmed you at the zoo when you were six. Yeah, so agreed. Agreed. Don't look. I am a technophobe. Yeah, I'm too. All right. I'm also a xenophobe, but I'm, I am a technophobe as well. Yeah. And you know what else we are? <laughs> yeah, what? We're out of time. Oh man. Good. Good. Uh, close. No runoffs because we're not in Georgia. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Or is there? There's also the Uplate podcast that you can sign up to for a lowly amount of money that I can't remember. Um, three dollars. Three bucks, and then you get more of us chatting, and you actually get all of the stuff that you're like, "Ooh, can they say that?" and Rest assured, you will listen to us on that podcast and wish we didn't say most of it. I certainly do. (laughs) And so make sure that you sign up to that. Everybody that listens to it loves it. We've looked at all the exit exit polls. No one has ever had an issue with it once ever. Ever commented. Never complained about it negatively. Never. It's amazing. Not one negative comment. Just keeps growing. I think it's not one positive comment. Maybe I fucked that up. But yeah, there's comments. They're all very happy with us delving into Miss Love's personal life to a point that makes him extremely uncomfortable <laughs> and then spanning that out for a month of content. I really like that. That got huge good exit poll results. Is there a man behind us? Probably. No. Oh, no, that's, uh, that's Miss Love just touching the curtain. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys. We'll join. For those of you that are patrons, we'll see you for the up late. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.